Namaste and thanks for tuning in. I'm Divya and this is my studio in the beautiful city of Bangalore. Today's project is super fun. I know I say this a lot, but this one was really fun and easy and the result is, turned out to be super, super cute. Because of this whole situation, we're not taking Drone out. Uh, he's missing his usual park rides. So we take him out on a drives usually in the evenings and uh, we were driving down and I spotted a huge banner on the Itsy Bitsy store. It said it said 80% off. So I ran in for a quick stop. Uh, not a lot of things for 80% off, but they did have uh, discounts going on throughout the store. I um, spotted these miniatures and I saw them I knew what I wanted to do. So I ran back through, um, so I, I went back through the store to see if they had mason jars. Um, they did have mason jars in a couple of sizes and uh, the jars and the miniatures were 20% off and I picked up three of these and I'm definitely going back for more. Um, they have they have these in their store and also online. I hope by the time you're watching this video they still have the sale going on. Even if not, I think these are absolutely adorable and something that you must definitely buy. Alright, let's dive into the tutorial. Let me show you how I made them. All the supplies used in this project are listed in the description box below the video. Make sure to check that out. Except these mason jars, I couldn't find these ones on the Itsy Bitsy website. I'm not sure why. But these are your pretty standard ones and are quite common. You can use anything that you find. These were rupees 129 a piece. I've shared a couple of links from Amazon as well. You don't necessarily have to use mason jars. You can use any glass jars that you have. These are the miniatures I picked up to go over the lids. An adorable pig, a cute cow and a sewing machine. These were all priced differently. The cow was Rs 149, the sewing machine 129 and the piggy was 79. They had a lot of options. You can also use these cute little plastic or resin animals that come as children's toys. I'm thinking they might work out much much cheaper. I have shared a few links from Amazon for those as well to check them out. The paints I decided to use for this project are chalk paints. We'll discuss more about them in a bit. At this point, I'm still undecided if I want to use these subtle pastel shades or these bright happy ones. I'm using some sanitizer to give the surface a good clean. This will make sure that the paint adheres without chipping off. You could use any kind of spirit for this. Uh, nail polish remover, sanitizer, rubbing alcohol, you get the idea. The next step is to fix the miniatures to the lids. I'm using a strong adhesive called E6000. This is an industrial strength adhesive. You don't really need this. You could use any strong glue that you have. When I wait for them to dry and set, I decided to peel and scrub off these price tags from the bottoms of the lids. The paints I'm using today are these gorgeous chalk paints from this brand called iCraft. These are Indian made and they're my newest discovery and I absolutely love them. I have tried them on several surfaces and today I'll be trying them on the metal lids and the miniatures. I think the miniatures are resin or some some sort of plastic so this will be a good test to see how these ink, how these paints will fare. My rule with paints or any other medium for that matter is that I give a thin even clean coat and go back for a second coat if necessary. I don't like to use a lot of paint all at once. These lids will also be getting a second coat. A second coat of paint makes a huge difference. I hope you're able to see that with this green lid. The first coat, you were able to see the checkered pattern, the plate pattern on the lid, but the second coat covers that up very, very well. 
Now I usually let my products dry naturally, but we've been having some crazy weather this past week. It's been very rainy and cloudy and that means the paints will take forever to dry. I decided to speed things up by using a heat gun. This is a this is just like a hair dryer but much much more powerful. Um so so one has to be careful while using this. As an extra precaution, I'm also using a heat resistant craft mat. Now both of these steps and products are optional. You don't have to use these. You could just let it dry naturally or under a fan. While sticking down these animals to the lids, one thing that I didn't foresee was that I needed to align the animal to the front the front design of the jar. I randomly just glued it down. but then later once i finished them and i was trying them trying the lid on the jar i realized that they were facing um random directions so you might want to keep the lid on on the jar while you stick the animal so you'd align these things perfectly i went around the studio to look for little things i could put in these jars i found some pom poms some paper clips and these wooden balls i bought long ago I now I don't know what these are or why one would use them but these are the sort of random things I spend all my money on. <laughs> on to the next step this is the final step and uh that's varnish. For these jars you could use any kind of varnish that you have. You could use a spray varnish. These are usually available in hardware stores and these are used on automobiles. You could use Mod Podge, uh you could use any of these spray varnishes available for um artists for um say oil or acrylic paints. I have um I have I have two of these varnishes from Camlin and Winsor Newton. You could use the good old gel medium that will work fine too. I'm using my trusty wood varnish, the Asian Paints Aquador. I'm a, I'm leaving a link to where you could buy this online, or you could just walk to any, or you could just walk into any hardware store that's selling Asian paint supplies, and they will have this. I always pour the varnish into a smaller jar so I don't contaminate the bigger one. The varnish step is super simple. One even coat of varnish, and these jars are ready for display. At the end of the video I've sh shared some close-ups of the finished jars. I think they turned out super cute. I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for regular fun DIY deco videos. If you'd like to reach out to me, you could do it in the comments here on YouTube or Facebook and Instagram. I go by the same name Yelling Yellow. That's it for today guys. See you soon. Bye.